Okay, and so n next lesson um, after the for loop, um, sort of continuing here, but this will probably be a second video, is uh, going to be on arrays. So let's have an integer array, um, j array just being the name of the variable. Um, and so what is an array? An array is like a set of data. So, so if I had an array of, say, five, um, and so this is the way you sort of the syntax for ex for declaring an array is you have this square bracket the number of elements and square bracket and then you can uh, initialize that using squealy brackets so zero say one say two uh, it doesn't really need to be in order though so let's say like uh, five and then like t ten or something it, it doesn't really matter what the what the data is um, it is just a, a list of data. And so um, we have one, two, three, four, five elements. The main thing to, th uh, to know here is that when you want to access a, data, a piece of data in this array, uh, it starts at zero, not one. Um, super important. Um, so the way this is going to work is that if I have an array, if I say array zero, this is going to ch uh, give me back the uh, first element, the zeroth element in the array, which would be zero in this case. If I was to say give me back the third element, this would actually be the fourth, which would be five. And it's just that's just because of the way it starts, because it starts at you got to count starting from zero, not from one. So this is zero, one, two, three. So although technically, the, if you were counting from the first digit, this would be the fourth. If you count from zero, it's the third. Just I know that it's one of the bigger confusions that people tend to have um, is just understanding that concept is that you you kind of most of the time so we're taught to count from one um, but you got to learn that you you don't actually count from one you count from from zero. It's a bit confusing that these are like in the same numbers so I'm just gonna actually just uh, shift these up a bit and have like say. Um, because it doesn't matter what data they are. Um, I don't really want to use such large numbers though, so let's say a data set that looks more like um, like that, I guess. So 9 is the zeroth element, 6 is the first element, 3 is the second, um, 5 is the third, and 10 is the fourth. So just to sort of show this, um, I'm going to just comment out this for loop because I'm going to be using it in a moment, but I just want to show something here. So if we see out um, array 0 and we just uh, control F5, then we can see it printed 9 um, right there. Uh, no new line, so let me just add the new line character. Um, so that this is a, might be a little easier for you guys to see. The text is fairly small here, and I'm not sure how to change the font. So, but that printed nine because the first element is nine. But if we say we print the third, we would get five because it's the fifth one. Not only can we look at them though, but we can also change it. So we can say change the third number to something like uh, eight, and then we'll see that the data in the array is now eight. Um, so this is this is just a way of storing consecutive data. Um, so what we can do with that though is we can use a for loop, and a for loop and arrays are sort of like uh, they're kind of kin to each other. They sort of work really well together. So if we wanted to loop through all five uh, elements of the array, we could do something like array. I and so what this will do is it'll loop through and increment I each time and then check until I is uh, until I is equal to five because once it's equal to five it will no longer be less than it and then it'll get out. Um, so if we do this, you'll see that it prints all the data in the array nine six three five ten. Um, in the same way, we could also make another for loop uh, that we could also set all the data as well. So then we could have something instead of C outing data, then we could have it so that uh, array i is equal to i. So this will just fill it with sequence, uh, sequential numbers. So if we run that, we'll end up with zero. Oh, sort of grab that by the by the arrow, meant to pull it over here in the center more. Zero, one, two, three, four, um, and so on and so forth. Um, 
And so that's sort of the power of arrays with for loops. You don't want to go outside of the bounds. So uh, for loop might be too confusing to explain this. I'm just going to straight up explain it using um, just C out. Um, let me just grab this line here, copy it up. So if I try and access a data, uh, a point outside the array, then we'll actually get problems. So you get this runtime error. Variable array is used without being initialized. Um, so what happened here is we tried to access the the, the fifth element. This el there was only up to four um, in this one. So by going up to the fifth, it actually threw a runtime error because it went out of bounds. This is bad, very, very bad, because what you're doing it, and I, I still need to take a point and talk about memory, which will probably be next weekend. I want to do sort of a Minecraft explanation video, but you're pretty much going past this array and accessing something random in memory, um, which could be anything really. And so that's really bad to go past the end of the array. So if you were to do something like um, array one, like 100, you're going way out there and who knows what kind of data might be there. Um, most of the time, I think it just returns an error though. I don't do with that often, so I can't really say. Um, like I, I don't. I, it's been a long time since I've sort of gotten an error with a, a array out of bounds. Um, but yeah, just try to stay below the number of elements. Um, you want to try and put in as many safeguards to sort of prevent the array from going out of bounds as possible. Um, so that's that's covered. So you can also define arrays like this. And so this is going to be like, oh, what what the heck did I just do? So the syntax is going to be a bit different now. So this is a set of data that is also within a set of data. OK, so this is where things are going to get a little more hairy. Um, let me just try and get this written up. OK, so this might look a little scary, but it's not that bad. So we've got bracket here and a bracket here. These two brackets are uh, sim uh, sort of like the uh, symbolizing the whole set of data and then we have actually five arrays of data within each of those there is another five elements. So it is a, a two-dimensional array is basically you have uh, sets of data in it, it, multiple sets of data um, and this is, can go even further and you can go into more dimensions but I only want to talk about 2D right now. So if we were to do um, stuff with this though we can't just do uh, the same way we did it before with a single dimensional array. We want to do um, when we're accessing or printing out data we're going to want to use actually just copy this up here. Um, we're going to want to access both so we want to look at the zero, zero element. This will take the zero set and look at the zeroth element in that set is what this is going to do. Um, so if we just fill these up a little bit I can sort of show so if we look at the zeroth and then say one or sorry um, yeah this so if we look at zero one oh runtime problems did, what did I mess up? Oh, it's this data here is no longer valid because of the way I've changed the array. So I'm just going to comment that out. Okay, um Okay, so we got 0 because what this is accessing is the zeroth set and the first element. So if we want to see it pop up one though, we would go to the first set, which would be this one here, and the zero element and that would print out one. And then we can look at, say, the fourth one, which would be the last one, and we'll get four. Um, and so we can fill these however we want. So this is how you access them. Uh, this represents the set you're accessing. This L represents the element you're going to access in that. Um, and so what we can do here is we can actually do, um, oh, watch this, okay. So here we're actually going to do a for loop within a for loop. Okay, hold on to your your hat for this one. So what we're actually going to do um, is have int j and so what's going to happen is we're going to get into this first for loop i will be 0 then it will execute the second for loop which will go through j to 5 and it'll actually go through this zeroth set to 5 times. So it'll go through this once and then through 5. And so 
Um, what we can do here is make this equal to J and then and then we'll copy all of this again and then print what we get out so copy down here moving a little quick um, but I hope you guys should be able to follow this um, and get rid of that so if I just run this you'll see we get one two three four zero one two three four zero so let's actually do uh, I think what might be better is if we actually didn't new line every time and instead what we did is do this so only new line after the after we've printed out a section so what this will do is it'll go through print out each element then add a new line so we'll see five numbers on one line this should make things a little more clear. So yeah, when we end up with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, so on and so forth. So what's going through is it's going through and filling each of these sets um, with 0 to 4 and then filling with J, right? So that J would be 0 to 4 because it's looping through here. Um, I'm probably going to just leave it with this for now. Um, and sort of leave, like leave whatever questions you guys come out of it, uh, come out of this with. This is sort of like a, a bunch of data to take in, so I'm gonna leave it here for this weekend, because uh, I expect a lot of questions, and I feel like I'm probably gonna have to make a couple more videos to have further explain this, because I don't think I've done it justice. Um, but we'll see what you guys get out of this, because I kind of, I, I, I feel like I went through this quickly, but we'll see what happens. Um, Right, so for now we'll leave it here. Uh, went over four loops and arrays, uh, some pretty big stuff. Um, this whole idea of looping within a loop. Uh, I'll like if you guys got any questions, just let me know. Uh, specific, like if you can tell me exactly where you're kind of messed up, or if the whole thing's just a kind of a blur, like if I went by too quickly. But I think at this point, if you guys have been playing with the while loops and the if statements you should be able to follow through a little bit and then this array stuff I know is really new um, so if there's any major questions with this I'll maybe do some Minecraft visualization of this idea of an array because I think building this with blocks I could kind of better explain it um, and yeah so I guess that's pretty much it guys so uh, this is Tolhi signing out later guys